Hey, what's up you amazing hackers? I hope you're all doing well today. Welcome back to the channel. I've been asked a few times, should I learn JavaScript for bug bounties? And my answer to that is very simple. Of course you should, it'll only make you more proficient. I don't see why you should not. Now, I've also been asked the question, can you explain me a bit of JavaScript then? So, I've made the script, I've put it together real quickly to show you a few of the key factors of JavaScript and show you how you can maybe read JavaScript a bit more effectively, but also understand what it is because JavaScript is a scripting language and it's a client-side scripting language, meaning this file gets downloaded and executed on your computer. So if I have a website and I'm building that and I want some interactivity on that website, but that interactivity doesn't require your server communication, then I might use JavaScript for this. Now, a first example is variables. You can see at line number three, we define the variable with var name equals John. This is a string, but you can also indicate a variable through line number four, let h equals 20. You can also define a constant. This is a constant, it, it's a variable that's never going to change basically throughout the execution of the script. We have on line number nine, we are going to start a function. A function is just a block of code and we have a variable that we take in as a parameter called name. On line 10, we're going to console.log. If you've ever played with the developer tools, you have a handy dandy little JavaScript console there. And that is where these things are logged. Hello. And then you concatenate the hello with that name variable. Next, we need to call it on line 14, of course, otherwise this would never get executed. Now we have that name variable in there that we put through, but that name comes from line number three, of course. Next up on line number 18, we have a different type of variable. This is an object. And this is basically containers for named values. Named values, value key pairs is also called sometimes either, in this case, for example, a string name John, a integer age 25, or a boolean if student true. Next up, we're going to again access one of those properties and log it into the console on line 25. What we're doing here is we're accessing that student object and the property name from it. Next up at line 30 or line 29, I should say we have arrays. These are again a special type of variable used for storing multiple values in a single variable. So if you have a collection that can go into an array, for example. There are other data types, oh, sorry about that, other data types, but I don't want to bore you with those yet at the moment. Well, maybe later, if you're interested, just uh, for now, it's going to be a bit more simplistic. And on line 30, we are going to access an item from that array at index zero, which is gonna be apple, Index one would be banana. That's what these are called indexes, the number where that's at. Next up at line number 35, we have a, what is known as a loop. This is a logical structure. <clears throat> this is going to keep running until it reaches that last point. So we have let i equals zero. Remember let to define a variable. And then we say while that item array equals the full, uh, the array dot length is, um, that's what am I saying? So while the i is uh, less than the array dot length, we are going to go through that and we're going to go to the action which is behind that last semicolon, which is i plus plus. 
aka we're incrementing the value of that variable i with one. On line number 36, we're going to output that into the console again, and we're going to log a loop through, and we're actually going to log every single value of that array that we have defined before. Now, another type of logical statement is an if statement on line number 41, where we say if the age is greater than or equals 18, then we're going to log in the console you're an adult. Otherwise, we will log you are a minor. And finally, on line 49, you will see a JavaScript event handler. So what this does is it says document, that is your HTML page, dot get element by ID. So you have on your HTML page an element with the ID my button. When somebody clicks on that, execute the function to just pop an alert, hello world. I hope that makes a little bit of sense. That was a bit of a basic explanation of JavaScript. If you want to know more, let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye amazing hackers.